I forgot to hit the button. Sometimes it lets me hit the button and sometimes I don't have to hit the button. Okay, so this is what I was saying a second ago when you couldn't hear me. Okay, so that what I noticed is that it says, first I drink if I like scooch down a little bit, but the shirt says, first I drink the coffee, then I do the things. I got this off of Teespring. We actually, um, when we were on our vacation, there was a, a poster in the coffee shop we went to and like the breakfast space we went to and or like a little sign or whatever that had this. And then I found the t-shirt and I love it so much. And it's ironic. We're going to get to the point in a second. It's ironic because uh, this is the first co black coffee I've had in, I don't know how long we ran out of milk and I was so busy yesterday. I forgot to go get more milk. So I'm drinking black coffee, which is unusual for me. So it's going to be a weird chat. That's the point is I already know like I'm it's going to be weird. <laughs> At least I feel it. I feel it in my soul. So the weird thing, the weird thing that happened, let's get on topic, is that yesterday there was a weird post that basically, okay, we're, I'll just show you the post and then we're going to talk about it. So let me get into the, get the picture up. This was posted on Smashbox's Instagram. Smashbox Heart Becca. It looks like there's going to be some Becca products available over at Smashbox. And we're going to get into the details of why I think this happened, how I think this happened. Is this really done out of true love? Spoiler, it's absolutely not. Uh, we're going to talk about it in a second. But before we do, I do want to quickly say hello to the people that are here live in the collective brain of makeup awesomeness. Also, as the people that are here in live chat, they are what makes this chat special because it's not just me with one opinion. We have hundreds of opinions out there. Uh, right now, we have 160 potential opinions on this topic and also the Allure Best in Beauty. We're just going to focus on the makeup section uh, because there's just so much makeup to talk about. But but their their opinion is I'm very, very interested to hear what they have to say. So let me go ahead and say hello to them very quickly. Good morning to our moderators, Teresa. Thank you for being here, Flory and Steph and Audra. Thank you so much for being here, for being my fabulous moderators. And John, of course. I always he just is always there. So I like I forget to thank him too. But <laughs> always thank your spouse. Always always thank your significant other. Uh know let them know they're appreciated. Uh <laughs> So, uh, but thank you to the moderators for being here and for keeping this a, a peaceful, fabulous place, even though we very rarely have issues anyway. So, but, but it's nice to have that security blanket knowing you're here. Thank you for being here. Liz, good morning to you, my friend. Felicia, good morning to you. M. Neo, uh, yes. So M. Neo has a question we're going to answer in a second. Good morning. So does Smashbox saving Becca mean that the entire product range will continue or does it concern only the best-selling products, the under eye corrector and champagne pop highlighter? We will talk about that. Alicia, good morning to you. So good to see you. Christine, good morning. Honey, 2800. Uh, Kaibara, uh, good morning to you. Laura and Cricket. And... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I messed up. The cricket says, is it supposed to be 930? I thought it was supposed to be 10. I let the short story is, is that I thought that the, it was going to do something and it didn't do the thing. So it made it look like it was going to be 930. That was that's that's the short story. <laughs> So, um, so yes. And, uh, Beatrice, I want to, oh wait, let me see. John, John clarified the chat and then, um, make mobility says good morning from Oklahoma. So, uh, welcome to you. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, happy to have you here from Oklahoma. And then Beatrice uh, said that they, uh, she just finished what's been makeup. My eyeshadow on there is courtesy of Tina from the fancy face and her new hummingbird palette with Odin's eye. Definitely check it out. It goes on sale today at 3 PM Pacific 6 PM Eastern. Uh, it is fabulous. Highly, highly recommend. Um, I have swatches over my Instagram of all three influencer palettes if you're interested. All right, let's go ahead. Oh, we have a new member. Miss Melissa, thank you so much. Let me find you in here so I can click on your comment because I'm way, way behind. Miss Melissa, thank you so much for joining the Elite. I appreciate you so very much. Thank you. All right, uh, let's talk about this. So... <laughs> What is happening here? So this is the caption next to the Becca post uh, the, from Smashbox. Psst. We have major news to share. Becca Cosmetics' most loved products have found a new forever home with Smashbox uh, Cosmetics. The light shine on the under eye brightening corrector and the shimmering skin perfector pressed highlighter in Champagne Pop. Available this October. Can't wait. Get early access at Smashbox.com. Okay. So I looked at the comments. 
Um, this was interesting. Uh, they asked, uh, does this mean we will still be able to purchase Becca's products from Smashbox's websites? Smashbox says, yes, you will be able to purchase the under eye brightening corrector and the shimmering, shimmering skin perfector champagne pop in October. Do you notice they're not saying any other products? Here we go. Afro Kitties asked, will you carry Becca's bronzers? Uh, because I know that their bronzer range was especially uh, popular with deeper skin tones because it worked so well for them. Uh, Smashbox says, hi there. There are no additional plans for Smashbox to launch any additional Becca products. Visit us, blah, blah, blah. So it's just those two products. Now, I've heard so many good things about the under eye brightener. I've never used it, but I know that that's very, very popular. But what gets me about this champagne pop thing is that when Jaclyn Hill designed champagne pop, she specifically said it was limited edition, that it was only going to be available in her palette. How many years ago was that? Okay, so Becca brings it back, not only in the pressed version, does a cream version, it sells the crap out of champagne pop. Um, just, yeah, it's a, it's a whole thing. And now it is one of two products, that's the only shade they're selling for their, uh, their highlighter over at Smashbox. Now this comment is the comment. This is the one that really breaks it down and says why this is happening. Here we go, full credit. Breezy B says, Smashbox is also part of the Estee Lauder group, as was Becca. They're not saving the brand. They're just choosing which products they wanna keep marketing, making profit from. It is not about love, it's about money. That's the real world, that's the truth. So I think they realized that even though Becca was failing as a brand, just as a whole, as a brand, was not doing well, wasn't good for Estee Lauder companies. Estee Lauder, if you remember from What's Up in Makeup, they started putting a lot of money into other brands. When they said Becca was dying, they put a bunch of money into like The Ordinary um, and some other brands. So I think that they realized when Becca's stuff started going on sale that people were really freaking out about these two particular products. I'm honestly not sure why they didn't include the bronzers. Maybe they're just trying to, you know, test the waters and see. But I love the the photo that Smashbox loves Becca, like trying to make it seem like they're human beings and that Smashbox is this, you know, savior that's going to come in and save Becca from demise. And it's like, they're, they're, they're all the same parent company. It's all strategic marketing, which I'm not knocking. I think it's really smart. I think it's very smart of Estee Lauder to do this. I think, I just think it's very ironic that they chose Champagne Pop, which was only supposed to be available for like, I don't know, a few months back in, what was it 2016? <laughs> now it's 2021. And that's the shade they go with. Um, it just cracks me up. I am just, I'm in disbelief. Let me see what the community has to say. Oh, we have another mem new member. Thank you so much. Let me find you, Cindy. Thank you so much, Cindy. Much appreciated. Thank you. So let me see what you all are saying about this topic. Oh yeah, I, you know, today's look was was a struggle. So thank you so much for that if people like it. <laughs> thank you so much, John said people are liking my hair up. Yeah, Paul says they need to reveal when they talked and signed a contract it's shady and misleading and, and everyone was buying because they were allegedly closing. Now all of a sudden they're back to sell some more products, but that's exactly what Becca does. That's what they did with the champagne pop. They're they they do the it's going away, it's limited edition, but wait. It's so popular because of you and the popularity and how much you've purchased it. We decided not to make a limited edition. <laughs> That's what they do. It's manipulative and it's marketing and it's, you know, you know. Yeah, Sandra says those products are cash cows. Not doing this is leaving money on the table. I agree. And it's 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 kind of a smart move. Is it manipulative? Yeah. Is it, you know, like yeah, it's it's all of those things, but it's also very smart money-wise, which is their job as a company, as Estee Lauder as a company, it's their job. So yeah, exactly, Siri. Well, though, 
companies are all about profit. That should not shock or surprise. I think that when we start seeing this is this is where I think that we get into the whole thing is that we start seeing companies as people, people with emotions and morals and ethics. And um, that we've talked about this a lot in live chat is that these companies, they're not people. They have people running them. They have people that are behind them, you know, but but really and truly, especially these larger companies, especially the larger companies that have way more people involved. It's not they're not people. They don't have the company doesn't have emotions. They have one goal, and that's to create something that people will purchase. That's it. That's it. Yes, Joey. Thank you, Joey. I was thinking this too. Thank you because I might have forgotten this. Estee Lauder is saving Smashbox. I think you're right because Smashbox, I'm assuming, is not doing well either. I think that it's sort of going downhill with them with those cover shot palettes, the first ones uh, that were really bad. I did hear that they got, they improved them, um, but I, I bought a, a bunch, I think like four of those cover shot palettes and they were all awful like at launch. And I think that they're better, a little bit better now, but, um, but I do think Estee Lauder is saving Smashbox with this, adding some sales of some beloved Becca products. That's a really good point, Joey. Thank you so much for um, for bringing that up. Yeah, Tiffany, last minute save, not surprised. I have to say I am surprised. I did not see this coming. I I never would have predicted this, uh, but, but yeah, I think that it's you know, last minute save. They got all the, they leached all the money out of the Becca fans just to say, but wait. <laughs> Wow, just wow. Jessica, Champagne Pop sold so much that even if it was originally limited edition, the company would lose by not putting it permanent. They can make huge profits. Exactly. Exactly, Jessica. You hit the nail on the head. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly, Clemonade. I think that what you're saying is, I think you're, it's true. It's literally only a matter of time before we learn Smashbox is going out of business. So maybe this Smashbox loves Becca because Becca's going to save Smashbox. <laughs> Maybe. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Chelsea says the same thing. Absolutely. Oh, I meant to click on the one above, but we'll see uh, what this one says. Pan, pan, pan. It says, if they have to move physical product, doesn't it make sense to clear out their warehouses prior to people pay paying to move it all? Yes. It does make sense unless they're made in the same, unless they're so shipped out of the same warehouse because we don't know the back end of it. Um, but that's an interesting point. This is the one I was aiming for, but that was a good one. I'm glad I clicked on that by accident. Uh, just another Claude says, I was just about to try some Becca at TJ Maxx, was going to stock up. And I think a lot of people did. I think a lot of people did. And I will not, I would not be surprised if Smashbox comes out with a new bronzer. And that bronzer is all of the Becca stuff just in Smashbox packaging. Because I feel like that's the big thing that's missing. I think that that's the big thing that people um, were going to miss uh, were those bronzers. Uh, and the other shades of highlighter, I mean, opal and rose gold. And um, there were a bunch of ones that, excuse me, that people really liked. So I don't know. We'll have to see what happens. But uh, But yeah, I agree. Everything you all are saying, I agree. This is, ooh, Lisa, great point. Maybe the profit earned under Smashbox will enable the owners of Becca to start over a new brand. Smashbox, in my opinion, might be on its way out as well. Yes. And the last time I really heard of Smashbox and heard of anything happening with Smashbox was when Nicole Concilio did the, um, the sprays or whatever. There were like some sprays that reminded me kind of of the Mac ones. I think they were like setting sprays or something. That's the last I remember hearing of Smashbox. What was that, 2019? I haven't heard of anything from them in so long. Yes, Dark Angel, exactly. Yes, ma'am, Smashbox isn't being talked about at all, but now they are. Yes, yes, you are 100% right. I love when we're just like, y'all are just dropping the, the truth. Yeah, Cricket says, well, it's probably smarter to say it's still Becca than have Smashbox come out with stuff that's a dupe and get people heated, but it'll get people talking. It'll get people talking. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. I don't know. I don't know.
Ah, uh, interesting. Diana says, I heard a while ago that Smashbox would be selling it under iPerfector, but I thought it would be as their own product. Is this their way of testing the waters of their customers? Maybe. Maybe. It's a good point. Ah, uh, Tiffany, thank you for this. Tiffany says, I wish that we would differentiate between marketing and advertising. All marketing is not manipulation. That's true. That's very, very true. Sometimes marketing can just be really smart and cool. Like uh, my eyeshadow today that we'll talk about this. I see this as being marketing that's not manipulation. I think that's a really good point. And I think using those words correctly is really important. So if I didn't, then I definitely want to correct that now. Thank you, Tiffany. You are awesome. I probably did. I think that's probably why I probably didn't use it correctly. So thank you, Tiffany. Um, I'll have to like think about that and really resonate on that and make sure I have that straight in my head for future discussions. Thank you. Yeah, JK says it probably doesn't hurt to consolidate the brand for Estee Lauder. Totally, totally. Tina. Is Tina here? Tina just got here? Yay! There she is. The star of the hour, Tina, the fancy face, and her collab with Odin's eye. I, I think I brought it upstairs. It's upstairs because I just took pictures of it for Instagram, so I don't have it down here. But uh, but definitely go check it out. Thanks, Tina, for dropping by. I appreciate you. And congratulations. I'm so happy for you. Um, <laughs> Holly wants to know if this palette smells like Play-Doh. It does not. It does not. All right, let's go ahead and jump into... Uh, Allure's Best in Beauty because it, it's, mm, let's start with the face products. Now y'all are going to really need to help me on this because I haven't tried a lot of these products. So some of them I have and some of them I haven't. So I would love to know your thoughts on these. I'm going to show you the face products and then we'll talk and then we'll do our, um, our break for what's on my face and then we'll do eyes and lips. So let's talk about the first face product that won an Allure Best in Beauty Award. It is the Patrick Star One Size. Uh, this is this is what they say about it. Let me find it. Um, I have my window open. You can find all of these things on Allure's website right now. Uh, this is what they say about it. It says a buildable powder with an invisible finish, one size, turn up the base, versatile powder foundation lets us control the intensity of our coverage. And that's why they, um, they chose it. And I have not tried it. Um, uh, most powder foundations for me, I find can only build so much, um, that they don't seem they're, they're more of like to like, if I have a foundation on and I want to build up the intensity of, of a liquid foundation, I might add a powder foundation over top, especially under my eyes. But I don't, I rarely will use a powder foundation on its own, but I'd love to know your thoughts. Here's the second one. Estee Lauder's Double Wear. This is their sheer long wear makeup with a little bit of SPF in it. And PSA, always wear regular SPF with your makeup SPF. Uh, and they say about this one that it, uh, the Estee Lauder Double Wear Sheer Longwear Makeup blurs, pores, and obscures fine lines with the lightest finish in the game, which confuses me how it would blur pores and obscure fine lines when it's just a tinted color product. I don't really get that. Uh, so you'll have to tell me if you've tried that. This one I have tried. This was sent to me in PR. This is the Makeup by Mario Blushes. This is, what do they say about this one? I'm scrolling down. Okay, it says, it's saturated enough to create a gorgeous flush and fine enough to let your cheeks peek through it. And I 100% agree with that statement. Absolutely. And then the last, oh no, there's two more. The Rare Beauty uh, blush made it. Uh, got their 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 wards, got their flowers. Uh, with the richness of a balm, the stay putness of a stain, Rare Beauty's Stay Vulnerable Melting Blush imparts a wash of color that is indistinguishable from your own skin. I almost got some of those and then I did it, didn't get them. So now I'm thinking about it. I think that might be a good idea <laughs> to get some of those. Uh, and then one more, this one I've tried as well. Uh, this is the Pat McGrath. Um, and this is the the um, 
Skin Fetish Ultra Glow Highlighter. It says this only reasonable alternative, the only reasonable alternative to swallowing a light bulb. Pat McGrath Labs Skin Fetish Ultra Glow, Glow Highlighter seems to eliminate the skin from within using finely milled high wattage shimmer. And I totally agree with that as well. I think that they had some very good picks there. And now I would love to know what the community thinks of these picks. There's a bunch of other ones too. Um, there's probably 20 of them over there. There's no way that I'd be able to go over everything. So, um, Cindy says with the Estee Lauder, it just fills the pores. So you said that there isn't a whole lot of tint to it. Is that what you're saying? Um, Adriana says, I think a few influencers have reviewed that Estee Lauder one. They seem to like it. Good to know. I used to recommend the, the original Estee Lauder double wear to brides. Um, I had it at one point, but I either used it up or threw it away or something. I was definitely um, loved for a while, but it's very... Uh, it's very, very full coverage. Uh, Banshee Muse wants to know if the makeup by Morrow Matte Eyeshadow Palette is any good. Yes, it absolutely is. It is a fantastic staple base eyeshadow palette for, from what I've heard, all skin tones because it does have a really nice range of colors in there. Um, it's it's wonderful. I will tell you that. And that is 100% from my soul. Uh, if I bring, well, if I, whenever I travel again, whenever that may be, I, that would be a palette I would bring as like a base and then bringing the, um, like some kind of color palette with it to, to add some color in. But it's, it's fabulous. Uh, Ronnie says, so many people say the rare beauty blush wears off. Kimberly says the makeup by Mara just looks overpriced for how it looks. I agree. It does. Um, it's very simple packaging. If for, for To its credit, it is a little bit heavy, but the packaging is very simple. Uh, I do think it goes with Mario because Mario isn't a very flashy guy. He's very subdued. So it makes sense to have something clean like that. But I totally see what you're saying. Totally. And Melinda says most of the channels I've watched do not like that rare beauty blush. Sandra says I stopped wearing foundation for a few years a few years ago. Now that there are so many sheer ones, I might try them again. Yeah. And I really like the sheer ones too. Uh, very much so. Very much so. And honestly, I think if I didn't have a makeup channel, I might not wear foundation at all. Um, I'm, I may just wear it occasionally. It's definitely not something that I feel like I, I want to use all the time. I don't like the way it feels on my skin a lot. Like right now I'm wearing the CoverGirl foundation and I just it just feels heavy. Like I can feel it on my skin. Like I love that foundation. I love the coverage of it. I love the way that it looks on my skin, but I can feel it a little bit. And it might also be because it's getting old and I should probably throw it away. So I totally see your point. Uh, Katie Leanne says, surprise, the other rare beauty blush was not brought up. I've heard more negative things about that particular blush formula compared to the liquid one. Interesting. The liquid one was too pigmented for me. It was difficult for me to work with. Um, that's that's my personal opinion, but I did not try the cream one. Try to scroll down a little bit. Uh, Movie Man wants to know uh, who makes these decisions. What's it based on? It's the Allure editors. So they get tons of products sent to them over you know over the year, and then they all they get together the editors and they pick things um, based on their personal preferences, I guess. At least that, that's the impression. I, I, I don't know anybody in that job, but that's the impression that I get. Uh, Cosmic Slice. Patrick Starr turned me off his product range during his... Uh, his wait, Patrick Starr turned me off his product during his rare beauty review because he kept talking about his stuff and comparing his stuff to rare beauty. And a lot of people saw that as really tacky. I think we did a whole live chat on that. Um, and his stuff has mixed reviews. Totally love the rare beauty blushes. I bought the Patrick Starr, the one size makeup remover things. I do a full review on those, but then I didn't buy anything after that. Yeah, Banshee Moose says the same thing. Reviews I've watched of the Rare Beauty Blush, does, it doesn't last. Interesting. <clears throat> 
Uh, Abigail, Estee Lauder tests on animals, though. Um, <clears throat> for clarity on that, Estee Lauder themselves, uh, they claim not to test on animals. Where it comes from is that Estee Lauder does import into mainland China, where the products do have to be tested because they're made in the U.S. and shipped over to mainland China. Uh, those products do have to go through pre-market animal testing. There's a lot of advancements in that and then that uh, companies can now apply to bypass that. So I have a feeling within the next year, uh, Estee Lauder and these big companies, I'm honestly surprised that they haven't bypassed it at this point because I think it's been since February that this went through um, of 2020. No, of 2021, February 2021, I think is when that went through. I'm surprised they haven't gone through that. Something must be happening that make that's making it not happen. Like I'm wondering what's happening behind the scenes there. But um, but from my understanding, there aren't there aren't any makeup companies that I know of, cosmetic companies that I know of that test on animals in the United States. It's all that importing to China where they know their products are going to be tested on animals. And that's why they're not cruelty free. So I just want to make sure because a lot of people believe that that the companies are testing on animals when it's it's more like they know it's going to happen. So they might as well be doing it themselves. And they do pay for it. They pay for that testing because in order to sell in China, they have to pay for that testing to happen. So they're funding it which is another reason why they wouldn't be considered cruelty free. Yeah, Tina says the same thing. The rare beauty blush melts away, so it suits the name. <laughs> uh, Afres says, oh, I was pleasantly surprised. Some newer products. I actually have a Makeup by Mario blush and it's fine. I probably wouldn't give it an award. Yeah. I mean, I think it's I think it's a good formula. Um, I don't think it stands out as being like, oh my gosh, this is groundbreaking. Uh, but it's good. I like it. Uh, Krista says, I quit wearing makeup so I could reapply sunscreen like you're supposed to. I wish there was a good way to reapply and have good even protection without ruining makeup. Yeah, I mean, I think that some people use like the sprays. I think Dr. Dre has a video on that. I haven't watched it though. Some people use the sprays. There's also some powders that people use. I don't know how effective those are. Like, I don't know like how that works. Um, and I'm not talking about like the aerosol sprays that, that like you shouldn't be inhaling kind of thing. They're like more like face friendly sprays. Um, but yeah, what I've, what I've learned recently and people would definitely correct me if I'm wrong is that you don't necessarily need to reapply your sunscreen every two hours unless you're sweating, um, or you're getting your face wet. If you're compromising it somehow, if you're just like in an office all day or whatever, you don't need to reapply it every two hours. Um, it doesn't like wear off unless something makes it wear off. So I don't know if that puts your mind at ease at all, but you may want to just make sure I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm right on that, but, um, you're Skin health is way more important than just my words, so make sure you look into it. Um, I, I definitely don't don't want to give you the wrong thing, but that's that's my impression. And anybody can please correct me if I'm wrong on that. All right, we are at the halfway mark. So let's take a little bit of a break and then we'll talk about eye products and lip products. So on my face today, I had a rough time with my eyeshadow and it's not the eyeshadow's fault. It's because I was rushing because I had to get all these pictures into my computer and I didn't give myself enough time. So I played with the Play-Doh palette and it does not smell like Play-Doh, which makes me so, so happy. I wanted to kind of match my shirt a bit. I'm very matchy matchy. I used to work at Outback Steakhouse for many years and back then, I I don't think they do it anymore, but back then we had these bright colored shirts. So what you had to do is you had to press your shirt, like these bright colored button up shirts, and then you wore a t-shirt underneath it and you would roll your t-shirt up over the, the, the button up. So you had two different colors um, and then your t-shirt would poke out here and then you had all your flair and everything. So I would always match my makeup to my Outback shirt. So if I had a purple shirt, I would wear purple eyeshadow. So I still do that. I still like to kind of match my, my my makeup to my my clothing instead of doing like contrary colors I like to like match it it's fun so anyway point is 
<laughs> I use this shade here. This is called Bold Burgundy. This one's called Poppy Orange. And then the sparkle you see, the shine you see on my lid is this Orange Dazzle. Sorry, the print is very small. Orange Dazzle. And then the inner corner is the shade. It says Petal Pink, but it really is more of a cream shade. It has the slightest hint of pink. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have called that pink. I don't know why they're calling it pink. Uh, lower lash line, I use a mix of the Bold Burgundy and this Creamy Vanilla, which I don't understand why that's creamy vanilla. If I had anything vanilla that was that color, I would be wondering what's happening because it looks more like a chocolate color. Like, I don't know. I don't get it. But um, there is a pressed glitter in here and it's the sapphire sparkle shade, but the rest of them look like they're, um, they're either matte or they're foiled shimmery shade. Uh, so far, really enjoying these palettes. I kind of wish though I hadn't bought them because now I'm like drowning in things I want to review. And I said I was going to review these for you next week, um, the three palettes. So I've been playing with them. This is the Ouija board one. These all came out. I don't even know if these are still available. I hope they are, but this is the Ouija board one. I've been playing with that one a lot and I have not played with the Monopoly one yet. This one's still in the package. Uh, so I said I was going to review these for you for next Friday, but now I'm like, I really want to review the Odin's Eye palettes. I really want to review the Cinderella collection from Sigma. And it's like, I feel like now I'm like, because I said I was going to review that. Now I'm like stuck reviewing that one. I kind of would rather review the Odin's Eye stuff. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see what I can get done. I have a very busy week this week with my other business. So um, I, don't, I don't know what's going to happen. We will see. Oh, and then on my lips today, I used the M Cosmetics. This is their, it's, I forget what it's called. It's like a lip, lip fluff or something like that. And this is the print, very small. Uh, Rose Nude is the name of the shade. I had a more warm toned lipstick on and it made me look like it was weird. It made my skin look weird. So I had to put on something a little more rosy tone. And then my blush today, just barely peeking through. I only put on a little bit just so to try to add some kind of color to my skin. This is Work uh, by Milk Makeup and this is their Lip and Cheek Mini in Work. So that is what's on my face today. Let me scroll down and see what you all are saying. I know, Nessa, the Monopoly palette is so freaking cute. It's it's adorable. And like, I'm not sure if you can see, but imprinted, probably the photos imprinted, like they have it stamped in. They have the names of the different streets uh, imprinted and stamped into the different things, which is very cool. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to keep playing with those. Interesting. Jane says vanilla scents always turn compounds, brown soap, candles, makeup, etc. That makes sense because vanilla, uh, vanilla beans are actually brown. So that makes sense. And vanilla extracts are brown. So that's a very good point. <laughs> but usually vanilla things are not brown. Usually they're like white or like have like a tint of yellow or like a cream color. They're very rarely brown vanilla things, right? Am I wrong there? Am I wrong? <laughs> but you're absolutely right that they, that it is a brown bean. So, you know, yeah, so uh, Say says, uh, so excited for the Odin collection, especially Tina's palette. They, they really knocked it out of the park. Uh, Beach, uh, Bay Beach Beauty, I am going to be announcing hopefully next week my other side business. It's not going to be something that um, the masses will be able to support for a little while, but I will let you know. Um, it's going to be more of me just telling you more about my life rather than like asking for your support or asking you to purchase or anything. Um, it's, it's a passion project that I'm really uh, excited about. So Maybe, maybe this weekend I'll have a little sneak for you on like uh, my YouTube community tab or something. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to leak it this weekend or next week in chat. I don't know. But, but yeah, things are moving along very, 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 very well, faster and better than I could ever have expected. Uh, and it's been a lot of work, but I'm really, really happy. So yeah, really happy, really, really happy. All right, let's move back to uh, the beauty stuff. What's up? Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so people are asking about, con John said about concealing dark circles under their eyes. <laughs> All, a bunch of people. I am not an expert in that. I will admit it. Uh, my favorite product that I personally use um, is this one. 
this is the one that I use today. My, my dog is dreaming. If you hear a little squeaky sound, she's awake now. No, that's Sam. Oh, that's Sam dreaming. Do you hear it? You hear the squeaky sound? I'm not sure if you can hear it, but that's Sam having a dream. He's barking at somebody in his dream, I guess. Um, <laughs> but this is what I use for dark circles. This is the Milani Supercharged. This was set in PR, but I use it almost every day. Uh, it's in 120 peach, but it doesn't uh, conceal very, it probably wouldn't conceal very deep dark circles. Um, I would recommend looking up uh, color correcting products and things uh, that, that you could, that would match whatever your concern is. So, uh, you know, if it's purple, you'll want to use one color if it's you know more like olivey greenish kind you're going to use another color uh but i'm not an expert in that and i don't want to speak wrong so oh audra here audra 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 save me audra dark circles depends on the depth and colors a combination of the right concealer shade and placement yes um concealers can help and i think if it's really a discoloration color correctors can definitely help as well um, but there's so much information uh that's a better source of information than me I like Audra. <laughs> it's a better source of information than me on that. All right, let's go ahead and, um, but I'm, I'm happy to, to do my best and show you my favorite product, but I don't have like significant dark circles to help you with. I'm sorry. So I, I'd rather just uh, straight up say it when I, when I don't, and rather than try to fake it. Uh, Josephine says, I use the NARS color corrector. Yes. Tracy, Tracy says my dog runs, barks, cries, and growls in her dreams. Yeah, I think that John went over and calmed him down a little bit and got him to stop. Poor baby. All right, let's talk about uh, eyes. There were a ton of mascaras. Let's just go through the mascara products and then we'll go through the other ones. So let me close out so I can get rid of that one. Um, best eye products of 2021. Okay. There were some brow products, but nothing that really made me go, oh, that's cool that they included that. This I don't have experience with. Uh, so I'm curious to see what you all think. This is right there. The Falsies Lash Lift by Maybelline. Uh, I don't know much about that mascara. Is it new? Because I don't, I don't know much about that. This is what they say about it. Maybelline New York Falsies Lash Lift Ultra Black Mascara concentrates colors at the root and curls our ends to the high heavens, mimicking surreal appeal of fluttery strips. So like strip lashes. Uh, next up, we have, let me move this window over one. Uh, actually, I'll move it over two. Okay. All right, next up, this one I was shocked because CoverGirl Lash Blast, I had the worst luck with CoverGirl Lash Blast. Every Lash Blast uh, mascara I've ever used I, has not worked well for me at all. Um, and the clean one I would never pick up because usually clean beauty uh, mascaras are not great. Uh, I found one so far that I like, and that's the Ilia one that they sent me recently. It says, infused with oils, CoverGirl Lash Blast Clean Volume Mascara glides to the extreme tips of your lashes for an elongated fan with no end in sight. Then we have this one, which I have tried. This is the Maybelline New York Lash Sensational Sky High Mascara. Uh, they said it has the busty... It says Maybelline New York Lash Sensational Sky High Mascara has the bustier of brushes. Oh, the bustier. <laughs> I was like, the bustier. <laughs> The bustier of brushes. You can see how often I read the word bustier. Flexible and conical. It lifts, sculpts, and defines Mother Nature with weatherproof, budge-proof color. And I actually really like this mascara. It's good. I don't know if I would give it an award, but it's good. I do really like it, and I think it would work for a lot of people. Uh, next up, we have this, which is an oldie but a goodie. Uh, this is the Blink Ultra Volume Tubing Mascara. I love this mascara. I haven't used it in years. I think I got in a subscription box at one point and was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. It says, similar to swim floaties, the Blink Ultra Volume Tubing Mascara forms a water-resistant sleeve of pigment around each lash, creating the illusion of girth. When it's time to remove, the airy formula slides off without tugging, and I love this mascara. Absolutely love it. It works great, uh, but I haven't used it in a very long time. This is another thing I haven't used in a long time that I used to be obsessed with. Uh, this is the Lancome Sills Booster XL Super Enhanced mascara base. It says the vitamins and conditioners form a glossy base that resists clumping, stiffness, and flakes, even if you're an overzealous applier of pigment. I have heard some people say that they have trouble with some of their mascaras covering up the white. I've had that problem, but not very often. It really depends on the mascara. 
So that's it for mascaras. I would love to know what you all think of those. Hi, the Luan. So good to see you, the Luan. <laughs> I just wanted to say hi to my friend. Okay. Uh, Penelope says, I have the falsies, but it's not great. Uh, Mary Beth says, the CoverGirl Clean Mascara is so slept on. It's amazing, and I hate clean marketing. Wow, really? Ali says, I bought the CoverGirl one because I like the color. The color is pretty. I, I will go with you on that. Kimberly, I've been locking... Uh, Looking for a new mascara, I use the CoverGirl on the orange tube. I may give that clean one a try since it's drugstore and I wouldn't waste my... Uh, waste too much money if I didn't like it. There you go. That's a good point. Robin says, I figured out I was allergic to the mascara. Oh my goodness. It might be, there might be some latex or something in there. Um, is that what it is? I don't know though. I'm just um, guessing here. Angela, my stepmom introduced me to the CoverGirl Lash Blash and now uh, it's now in my mascara collection. It worked great. Well, there you go. There you go. And I think honestly, like I feel like with lashes, it is one of those things. It's a very, very personal thing. And it depends on so many factors. It depends on how oily are your lids, how um, you know, your does your mascara tend to smudge? Does it tend to flake? Are your lashes short? Are they sparse? Are they long? Are they thick? Like, how many lashes do you have? <laughs> do you have a plethora of lashes? Um, and and I think that really lends to pr different particular preferences. And me with my short, sparse lashes that you cannot see unless I'm wearing mascara, I like really thick, clumpy, intense mascaras. Like I will, I want mascaras to have so much formula that I have to like struggle to brush it out. Like I want it to be bam. I also don't have a big problem with mascara smudging. I do have uh, flaking sometimes, but rarely. Uh, so that really lends to my personal preferences. So I think depending on your lashes, you're going to like one thing definitely more than another thing. Um... Roya says, the two Maybelline mascaras, I use them together and I love them. Nice. Margaret says, Essence is the best and so cheap. I agree. Not everybody agrees with us, but I agree with you. Erica, that cream cover girl mascara is the worst mascara I've ever used. The Thrive Tubing one is the best I've ever used, but it didn't win. Yeah. I've heard good things about the Thrive Tubing mascara too. <laughs> Teresa says, just order the blank mascara again. The only one that doesn't flake or transfer on my lids. Nice. It really, I really love it. I do. Thriving and Beyond says, L'Oreal Lash Primer is one of the best ever. Just as good as high end in my opinion. That's great to know. You know what other one I really liked uh, that Milani had sent me uh, was the, the Violet one that they came out with. I felt like that was just as good as the Sills Booster. M maybe not just as good, but close. Close to as good. It wasn't quite as thick. Nope, we're getting there. Next up, hang tight. We're going to talk about Danessa Myricks next. Actually, we should probably talk about Danessa Myricks now because I want to keep my pacing. All right, let's talk about the other eye products. Now, this one I was really excited to see because we talked about this brand launching and what's it been makeup, and it's like, yay! This is a, um, uh, I believe, an indigenous-owned brand called Kulfi. Uh, no. Indian. I think she's from India, not an indigenous brand. I'm, I'm sorry, because I th because Kulfi is a, is an uh, an Indian. I believe it. it I could totally be wrong here because it's been a really long time since I looked this up. But it's like an ice cream, and she named all of her liners after ice cream. And I was like, that's so cute. I love that. So this is the Kulfi Beauty Underline Kajal. Uh, Kajal eyeliner. I have to fix my pronunciation. Neutral pencils that fade into the background are kind of pointless. With creamy depth and built-in richness, the Kulfi Beauty Underline Kajal, Kajal eyeliner provides noticeable eye-opening definition. So really happy to see that because it was kind of, from my understanding, like a one-woman show launching this brand and they launched with these eyeliners. And it's so great to know that they're so good. It just warmed my heart. I wish I remember the details. I mean, this was probably a year ago that we talked about it. This one, I was very surprised. <clears throat> Excuse me. This one, I was very surprised. The About Face Fluid Eye Paints. You know, I bought some of these and I haven't used them since I bought them. I really need to break them back out and use them. Uh, this is what they say about them. Where is it? 
I lost it. There it is. Uh, about face day tripper matte fluid eye paint performs a sort of mini metamorphosis right before your eyes. The creamy fluid transforms into a powdery wash, draping lids in pastel color with an intense matte finish. And I think that description is is very accurate. I I did the review and I didn't touch them since, and I don't really know why. I think I don't know. I need to use them. I think they just got lost in my drawer or something. I don't know. I don't know what happened there. But I'd love to know your thoughts on that. And then speaking of Danessa Myricks, here we go. <laughs> Here's the Danessa Myricks. This is the, oh, where did it go? Oh, I thought it was something else. Hold on. I got to scroll the other way. Okay, next one. Uh, one swipe from the doe foot of Danessa Myricks Beauty Twin Flames delivers a holographic multidimensional gleam. And the only thing that stopped me from getting these was the price point, which is $26. It was like, Ugh! but um, but I've heard these are magical and I really should get some. I really should. Oh, I've heard such good things, such good things. And then, oops, wrong button, wrong button. Come on, Jen, you got this. And then this, I was surprised, the only eyeshadow palette. I was like, really? That's that's the eyeshadow palette? This is this is what we're, we're picking for, the eyeshadow palette? ColourPop Fade into Hue palette delivers so much saturated brightness and unadulterated joy. It's as if a Care Bear stared it into existence, <laughs> which is true. Um, and I have heard that it's a really good eyeshadow palette. Oh, there was one other eyeshadow palette from um, the Sweet Street Cosmetics LA Lady eyeshadow palette, which I don't know anything about it and included in our, our discussion, but those were the two eyeshadow palettes, this one and then one by LA Lady. So I don't know. But um, but I heard good things about this palette. I was just surprised like this was the one. Like this is the standout eyeshadow palette of the year. Like include this, but where are the other ones? Where are all the other good eyeshadow palettes? I don't know. I don't know. I was very surprised. So let's see what you all have to say about these. And then we'll do the lips. And then we are taking off for the day. We got about 15 minutes left. Scrolling down to get into the uh, eyeshadow talk. Yeah, someone had asked if Thrive Beauty was an MLM. It is not. To my knowledge. I should say to my knowledge. I've never heard that before. It kind of sounds like one, though, doesn't it? Doesn't it have kind of an MLM-y kind of name? Trying to find... <laughs> Steph says, all you had to say was that it's hollow. I want <laughs> the, the Danessa Myricks, probably. Uh, Thriving Beyond. Ooh, that's pretty. I love liquid eyeshadow. Natasha Denona's are wonderful. I have to try those. Um, yeah. I would like to, I, from Danessa Myricks. Yeah. I, uh, did I, tr mm, I thought about buying the Natasha Denona and then I didn't, they didn't, uh, the one person I saw review them didn't like them very much. Maybe it was just the shades that she got. I don't know. Arrow Scorpion says I'm wary of liquid eyeshadows. I've tried a few and they all irritate my eyelids slightly, but immediately I'm assuming it's the alcohol. Maybe. Yeah. Tiffany says the twin flame shimmers are awesome. There's so many things to buy and <laughs> it's like, how do you pick what to buy? <laughs> It's like all of the things. I want all of the things. Uh, I'm going to say Dindare. I just pre-ordered the Danessa Myricks eye flakes. They look incredible. They did look incredible. Absolutely. I know, Jen. I saw. I was like, ColourPop? Like, that's the eyeshadow of the year? Yeah. Donnelly says the same thing. I was very surprised. Yeah. <laughs> Tiffany surprised you. Uh, they choose a rainbow palette? I know. Melissa says, a lore list is not good at all. <laughs> I would love to know what you all would have put as the number one eyeshadow palette of the year. I was I was surprised that that was the thing. I mean, I don't own it. So <laughs> Cynthia says, oh, Lord and Savior ColourPop one. I know. I was surprised. So, yeah, I don't I don't know what what the deal is with that. I don't know. Oh, Shannon says something called Thrive Nutrition is an MLM. Okay, thank you for clarifying. Uh, the uh, the eyeliner is called Kofi. Uh, let me let me find it again. The eyeliner, right there. Uh, I got to take your comment off in order to see it. There it is. K U L F I is the name of the brand. All right, we've got to move because we only have ten minutes left and we have lips to talk about. So let's do. These, I have to look at the, um, 
at the article because some of them don't have the names on them and I don't have them memorized. I don't own any of them except for none. <laughs> I don't own any of them. All right, here's the first one, L'Oreal. This is the, it says the Satin Lingerie of Lip Color, L'Oreal Paris Le Nus in New Confident. I don't, it says confident, but I think it's supposed to be in French. So I tried, produces the sheerest possible wash of rose. It's $9. Uh, it's beautiful packaging. It's a beautiful lipstick. I don't, I, I don't know if I've ever even seen that in store. I know my French pronunciation is awful and I do apologize to those that speak French that it was, I butchered it so badly. Um, okay, so this is the second one. This is the, it says straight up cocoa with a powdery finish, Maybelline New York, color sensational, ultimate slim lipstick is more truffle, in more truffle and robes lips in richness and warmth. It's like, but what about the formula? Like, what is it about this formula that's really good? I don't know. I'm not sure. Okay. Next one. Mented Cosmetics. I've heard these are really good. This is a uh, creamy in texture and matte in finish. Mented Cosmetics Red Matte Lipstick in Red Rover is a saturated burgundy that goes on smooth. I've heard good things about those. These are $18. All the prices are all on uh, Allure's website. And these, I was surprised to see the new formula of the Bite Beauty Lipsticks. This is, it says, packed with cocoa butter and potent color, Bite Beauty Power Move Soft Matte Lipstick in Mulberry gives lips a hydrating raspberry hug. Um, I'm, I, that looks really matte, so I guess that would be what makes it special is that it's hydrating and matte at the same time. It looks really matte. Looks really, really, really matte. This I thought was interesting. You'll have to tell me what you think. Here we go. Kylie Skin. This was the only Kylie product that I saw. The sugar crystal smooth the oils and shea butter soften and the morning after use Kylie Skin by Kylie Jenner sugar lip scrub. Even the mattest of matte lip colors go on like silk. Test driven by a woman who really knows how to make the most of matte lip colors and by many Allure editors who really know how to get lips so glowy you might skip lip color altogether. It's like they almost had to justify it. <laughs> Uh, it's like they added an extra parentheses just to like talk. I'm, I, I think that's kind of interesting. Why, why did they have to add that extra? You know, like we really mean it. Like we've tried lip scrubs and this one really is good. It's not because it's Kylie. We promise. Like that's the vibe I get. And then finally we have this one from Fenty. This is, the description says, the boss of all glosses, Fenty Beauty Gloss Bomb Cream Color Drip Lip Cream. Delivers intense pigment and a vinyl shine in one perfectly dosed stroke. And I've never tried the cream ones. I've only tried the original gloss bombs, and I do like them very much. Uh, but that's definitely something I would want to try in the future. All right, it is your turn, my friends. What do you think? What do you think? Okay. Uh, being bio girl says I watched Allie's video and she got pretty heated. What did, what, what did Allie have a video on? Say says Allie's video is really good. What, what, what am I missing? What did I miss? What did I miss? What did I miss? Um, sorry. I really need to watch Hamilton again. I haven't watched it in way too long. I miss it. I need to watch it. It's been a long time. Allie Glines used it and it's gorgeous. What are we talking about? <laughs> I'm getting frustrated. I want to know. Uh, you can find the list on allure.com. Okay, I'm scrolling up and I don't see. Okay, here we go. Here's another mention. Angie says, I think there's another list coming out of high-end products. Allie Glines did a vid, has done a vid on this and said she believed ColourPop was on the drugstore list. Okay, I just want over, went over to the Allure website and they have everything broken down by category. And the categories we talked about today were face, eyes, and lip. They were not separated by drugstore versus high-end. They did have a budget picks section where they had, um, uh, what was it? The elf, the, the, the one that had the, we talked about it in what's a bit makeup was a big something, but it was purple and it like had like the thing. Oh, I can't remember. But anyway, it like had like the fruit in the advertising where the chick is walking down and she's singing and she's got the, there's like the fruit around her that's like singing and like looking at her like, Ooh, look at your lashes. Like that was like the, the thing of it. I don't remember what the mascara was, but that was in like the budget section. And then they had like a splurge section. So maybe that's what Allie's talking about. 
Maybe, I don't know. There you go. L1L says the Sydney Grace and Temptalia would have been my palette of the year. It was a good palette. It was a good palette. Yeah, Aeroscorpion. I haven't heard of any of the best of Allure products being ride or die products for anyone online or in life, but that's on par with Allure's best of list. See, I feel like some of them are like the Sills Booster XL, and um, I feel like some of them are, are kind of like ride or die favorites. I don't know. I agree with some of them. I like scrolling down to see. Kaylee says, I really like the ColourPop lip oils, actually. That's good to know. Yeah, Miss Meow says, with, with wearing masks all year, lip products weren't on my radar. I think that you were definitely not alone. I think a lot of people felt that way. Oh, okay. Allie did a review of Allure's best of list. Nice. Nice. Allie's tried so many products. She's a great person to do that video. Um, did a video about uh, all the drugstore Allure winners. She did not like the list this year. Maybe she just picked and chose and just took all the drugstore stuff out of the different categories. Um, oh, she was upset because major sections were missed. Thank you for, um, for clarifying that for me. I appreciate it. Big mood. Thank you so much, Miranda. Yeah, I got that right, Miranda. Um, thank you for that. That was the mascara I was talking about, about the fruit. <laughs> <laughs> big mood. A bunch of people telling me it's big mood. Thank you so much. I couldn't remember what it was called. It's been a bit. <laughs> um, oh, thank you so much. Margarita. I think I got it right. Uh, what happened to your eyes? They're beautiful and bigger. I, I, I think I don't, I have lashes on. I don't usually wear lashes in chat. Maybe that's it. And my eyes shut up. I don't know. Thank you though. I was feeling very rushed this morning, so I appreciate it. You never feel like so rushed and like, I look like crap. My hair looks bad. My makeup looks bad. I look terrible. Oh my gosh, I need to hurt. Like, that's the way I felt this morning. I was very like panicking about this. So thank you so much because I was definitely not full of confidence when I went live as far as my makeup looks. I appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah, Tracy says, she also said so many repeats. She said it, it was like they didn't try on the drugstore brands. Gotcha, that they did a lot of the same ones over and over again. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I did see a lot of new products on there. I guess just maybe not in the drugstore, uh, for the drugstore products, maybe. I don't know. Oh. I accidentally clicked this one. <laughs> um, being, can we can we buy your upcoming product project if we travel over there? Um, I will tell you more details as soon as I can. I feel like I can't tell you the answer to that yet. So I, I will tell you when I can. I promise. I accidentally clicked on that. I aimed for something else, but I'm happy to answer it since I, I clicked on it. Heather says, your eyes look huge and what's with makeup today. Thank you. I can give Tina all the credit. Tina and Odin's eyes all the credit. Just because you don't Mm. John says he thinks this because I don't often do bright looks and the bright looks are making my eyes look bigger. I remember when I met Scott Barnes and we were talking about contouring and I was like, cause I, we were talking about how, you know, he's kind of the king of contouring and all of that and how he's so good at it. And I was like, I went to a Sephora class. I was, to I told him, I was like, I went to this Sephora class for contouring and they, the person who was running it was like, never contour your nose. Like your nose cannot be contoured. Like, don't do that. And Scott was like, yeah, I agree. Don't ever contour your nose. It's not a good idea. <laughs> I was like, okay. And then he said, this is where it comes in. He was like, yeah, you have such small eyes. You're really going to need to do whatever. I forget exactly what he said. He's like, you know, making sure to really blow out the outer corner with like a darker color and brighten up the inner corner, which is what I do most of the time. And um, cause we were just talking about contouring all around and he was just like giving me general contouring advice that I didn't ask for, but was very thankful to get, um, you know, cause I, I didn't want to bother him with it. I didn't want to like milk him for personal information. I felt a little weird, but he was kind enough to offer that. And uh, I was like, I never thought about that. I had small eyes before until Scott Barnes told me I had small eyes. I was like, oh, I guess I do have small eyes. So whenever anybody says I have big eyes, that makes me really happy. <laughs> like It's like, I always thought I had big eyes. So, so yeah. And it was like a casual conversation. I was walking around IMATS and um, Kevin James Bennett, I ran into him and he was walking around with Scott. So it was like, it wasn't like a meet and greet or anything. We were hanging out for about, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes, something like that, just chatting. There's a vlog on my channel somewhere, but but yeah. Oh, thank you, Tracy. Tracy says, cool tones look good on me too. Thank you. All right, we have about one minute left. I'm gonna stop talking about myself. 
<laughs> Say says Ali's ears must be ringing. Maybe, maybe, definitely possible. Oh, <laughs> Kayla says you don't have small eyes. And, and I want to make sure I clarify, there is absolutely nothing wrong with small eyes. It was just, I always thought I had bigger eyes. So it surprised me. I'm not try trying to say that small eyes are bad in any way. It just surprised me because I always thought I had big eyes. And then when he told me I had small eyes, it caught me off guard. And I was like, wait a minute. I always thought I was this. So it's not, I want to make sure I clarify that. I don't want to make anybody feel bad if you have small eyes. <laughs> like, oh, I'm going to hurt somebody's feelings. I never want to hurt anybody's feelings. Like that breaks my soul when I hurt people's feelings. I absolutely hate it. So apple pie says I have small eyes as well. My eyelid space is smaller than most, but I know how to apply eyeshadow to help. And I think that really truly, like, I think that was what Scott was trying to tell me is that it's the, how you contour your eyes. You can really make them look bigger. So, so yeah. All right. We are out of time, unfortunately. Yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> Scorpion, that's a dream getting makeup advice from Scott Bars. I couldn't believe it. Like I was like, is this my life right now? Is this my life? Like it was like right before he started. I'm pretty sure it was right before he started showing up on Tati's channel was when I met him. So, um, I was very aware of who he was. He was wearing like a, like a muscle shirt, like, and he's like all bulging and like you know, all tan and, He's an interesting guy, really, really nice, really nice guy, very nice, very pleasant, very, you know, like he definitely had that air of confidence, but not arrogance, really nice. So anyway, all right, I'm going to go. Thank you for being here. Uh, this was fun. I was so much fun hanging out with you all. Uh, we'll be back next week. I have no idea what we're going to be chatting about next week, uh, but hopefully something pops up that's, uh, that's interesting. Maybe REM Beauty will launch. If you have not watched What's Up in Makeup today, you need to watch it. You need to at least watch Top News. Well, the product report is really good this week, too. Definitely, like, I don't very often promote What's Up in Makeup to y'all, but What's Up in Makeup is really good today. Like, I strongly recommend you watch it. It's a really, like, I very rarely will tell you, you should probably go watch this one. This is a good one. Definitely watch it if you haven't. All right, I'm going to stop self-promoting. Love you guys. Uh, and yeah. Wish me luck on my very, very busy and intense and exciting week. I'll talk to you soon. Mad love. Have a great week. Bye.